Internet Explorer, so everybody that is entering with the Mono Blue Spirit strategy is feeling pretty good about their chances today. And this is definitely a good matchup for them, I would have to agree. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. We were playtesting ahead of the tournament with, you know, between between the broadcast team and uh, <laughs> I beat Paul with it several times. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you got to say something impressive. I think we all were beating Paul in testing here, yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunate, but we're going to see a similar game plan here from Carl Sarup, as we just saw from Julian Wellman. We saw that titan of industry getting put back into yep. the library. If there is another one drawn, there's the Fire Prophecy to be able to deal with it. The Make Disappear and the Spell Pierce, those one mana permission spells that you mentioned yeah. in the previous game. Good coming clutch here against a very tempo-based build from Jacob Toth. Yeah, absolutely. And Spell Pierce surprisingly good in the hands of the Mono Blue Spirits deck. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly bad against the Mono Blue decks. You have Curious Obsession. You have some two drops that I can mm -hmm. hit early on. But most of the time, your first couple plays, your first three turns are really just creatures in this Mono yeah. Blue Spirits deck. We see Mausoleum Wanderer, you know, a card that has <laughs> been really a staple in formats as old as modern, you know, I mean, yeah. this, this is a very powerful one drop, one of the best ones, uh, and paired with some of these Lord Anthems like Supreme Phantom to make these cards bigger, as well as some of the utility creatures like Shacklegeist, uh, and, and as well as Rattle Chains in the, in the top left, you're able to just do a lot of different things yeah. with your spirits, and it's hard to attack this deck in one certain way with all those options available yeah. to the deck. You know, playing such cheap creatures, it, you, you'll often see multiple things happening in a turn. Yeah. If the if the coast is clear for Jacob, so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, kind of like we've been seeing in Standard yesterday mm -hmm. with the Is It Tempo decks uh, from Julian Wellman or the Mono Blue Tempo decks from John Emmanuel Dupra, it just has a lot of options to do on any yeah. given basis. So if you have that many options and you're that good of a player, <laughs> you usually can find a route to victory. For sure. Plenty of these creatures have flash as well, so Rattle Chains is going to be cast on the end step here. Make Disappear poised to say no thank you. Off the battlefield you go. And, you know, this Mono Blue Spirits deck, it, it, it kills you one of two ways. Either, oh, okay, well, it kills you by <laughs> diminishing your life total to zero, obviously. Yeah. But it's, it's my favorite either, way to do it. Yeah, yeah. just, just <laughs> get them to zero. Make them dead. Player removal is best removal. But, you know, it's either a case of, okay, I'm going to counter absolutely everything and then kill you with spirits, or mm -hmm. I just play this entirely tempo-based game plan where I crew up my, my little dudes with their, or enchant them with their auras mm -hmm. and just beat you to death. Yeah, yeah, and especially, yeah, those Curious Obsession-style mm -hmm. auras. When you can ever, you know, have the dream, which is turn one Mausoleum Wanderer or Spectral Sailor, and then Curious Obsession mm -hmm. it, and then you have one mana left to open, and I want to bring some attention to Geist Light, Light Snare. snare. Oh, it is so a one-mana mana leak, you know, maybe that is proving I am a boomer <laughs> with how uh, with how old that co counter spell is, but being able to have that available for one mana to protect that creature that's suited up mm -hmm. with the Curious Obsession is almost always GG, especially if you're on the play. And I love this play here from Jacob as well, just flashing that Spectral Sailor in, and the Mausoleum Wanderer gets to a powerful four. Yeah, and, and here- And War ain't gonna do it right now. It's interesting. I mean, there's not many other great options. Like, I'm just kind of looking at Carl's hand, and I'm like, oh, this does not seem like a good matchup. You know, the one thing that um, Carl, as well as the other team or transmogrify teammates have going for them, mm -hmm. where they aren't playing fires, it was good in the last matchup against these Rakdos decks. Yeah. It's really bad against these mono blue decks. So that helps a little bit. Yeah. But even this here, Carl's going to have to really find a transmogrify or a Luka pretty soon and, and use this Supreme Phantom yeah. that was just stolen by the Akroan War. Chew on that. Yep, exactly. Now, Chapter 3 of the Akroan War does do some damage to these spirit decks, though. But there's a lot of ways that Jakob can just, you know, petty theft it. Yeah. Um, can can do a lot of different things. A couple options here for the petty theft side of the Brazen Borrower can bounce the Supreme Phantom back to his hand if he wants to. Mm -hmm. Leaving the Akroan War with nothing to do because if there is a Transmogrify effect or a Luka in hand here for Carl, he doesn't have an answer for that right now. He's yeah. got the Geist Light Snare, so. Yeah, Geist Light Snare or the Petty Theft. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just bounce your own Supreme Phantom, which is pretty cute. But mm -hmm. um, Jakob deciding that it is much more important to bounce the Akroan War, get some damage, and now use that Geist Light Snare to just counter the Akroan yeah. War. Because Chapter 3 of the Akroan War is going to deal with any creature that doesn't have bigger toughness than its power. Yeah. Just quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, there is Luca Coppercoat Outcast. 
but we don't no. have it available right now. Mm -hmm. No mana to cast it, Corey. Unfortunately, so what is the game plan here for Carl? Knows that shenanigans are afoot, so sends the turn back. Careful cultivation yep. could be the play here. But mm. can we just get him dead here? Is there enough power somewhere on this board? Doesn't I don't look like think it. so. But from Jakob's side, that was actually probably the perfect draw mm -hmm. because Carl's really way to victory here was going to be channel that careful consideration, fire a fire mm -hmm. prophecy off, and you know if it gets countered, sure. If not, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then draw a land next turn. Use that careful consideration plus four other lands. Cast Luca, mm -hmm. and then have Spell Pierce available to back it up. So that's what Carl is trying to enact, and the fire prophecy is going to be kind of bait. Yeah. Essentially, um, mm. but you also you also need a land to force it through with spell pierce for Carl. So it could come down to this top deck land for Carl being the win or not. On the other side of things, though, Jacob is now cutting himself off from being able to double counter something. So if there were two things that Carl wants to do on the end step, now channel can't be countered. But what do we want to do here with the Shacklegeist? Yeah, interesting. Deciding if, I guess, if you want to fire prophecy right now, because the Mausoleum Wanderer, the, the kind of hidden mm. text that doesn't get used that often, is the counter something effect. equal to its power. So you can wait till the trigger on the stack. And now if you fire prophecy something, OK, decides to just go for that. But if you were to target Supreme Phantom, mm -hmm. you could then sacrifice it to say counter unless you pay three if that trigger resolves. Yeah. So fire prophecy points it at the Mausoleum Wanderer, which has the trigger on the stack to get the plus one plus one from the Shacklegeist entering. And I think this is a scenario, we'll see what Jakob does, but where you just let it go because mm -hmm. you get to attack for three. Um, yeah, get rid of that. Yeah. Crow and Horn, you get to attack for three, put Carl down to six, and then you have six power with Supreme Phantom, Spell, uh, Spectral Sailor, and Shacklegeist. So the way it looks right now to me, if Carl does top deck an untapped land, this Luka is going to resolve. Mm -hmm. Titan of Industry is going to hit the battlefield, and it's going to make Jakob's life tough, but yep. not impossible, because you can just tap it down with Shacklegeist yep. as well. So Carl needs that to just be in the game. And then we get to play a game, but a big drop step here from <laughs> Carl. So there's the careful cultivation. We need a land here to be able to cast Luca. It's not a land as Fable of the Mirror Breaker, so. Has to go for it anyways yeah. now, but it's gonna run into a counter spell, and there's the good game in advance. Carl knows yeah. what's up. Spell Pierce. Oh, it always feels so good yep. to get Max Valley off of it, but eh, Jacob disagrees. He's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna guy slide snare it, and that's yep. gonna be the concession. He knows. You always know if there's if there's untapped blue mana, there's a counter spell somewhere. Especially in the mono blue deck. Uh -huh. It is running a plenty, but that game was that close. Mm. If Carl just drew that untapped land, preferably that didn't uh, deal him damage, so no steam vents, any, yeah. any duel like that, all of a sudden you get Titan of Industry. You yeah. get to gain five life, put yourself a little bit out of range. It does have reach to block some of these flyers, mm -hmm. and you probably get a 4-4 four -four as well, so you can start pressuring Yakub. Yeah, start the race. Exactly, because if you don't pressure, oh. Oh, him. Corey, Corey, yeah. Corey. Why is there a red card in a mono <laughs> blue deck? And misclick, you know, just accidentally did oh, the yeah. red ley line instead of the blue ley uh, line. No, that is a really innovative tech from Jakob's team, and that is the ley line of combustion. I believe that is what it's called, and it is specifically for these Rakdos uh -huh. sacrifice matchups. It is whenever one permanent you control becomes the target of spells or ability, an opponent controls, Leyline deals two damage to that player. So Mayhem Devil just cannot go completely crazy when that's on the battlefield. And that is really just saying, you know, at least to me, and I've talked to these players, that they don't want to play that matchup, mm -hmm. but that's the only matchup they don't want to play against. They like everything else in the wow. field, which is saying a lot. That is, jeez. Yeah, they, they yep. must be very confident then yep. in their Explorer matchups. Yep. But yeah, so Leyline is the plan then just, okay, I won't get a mulligan until I find one, or is it just, you know, cherry on top if I do? Definitely a cherry on top because the blue deck can just win, especially on the play. If you're able to get that kind of sailor into Curious Obsession, <laughs> Geistlight Snare draw up against Rakdos, like, and you could just counter Mayhem Devil, mm -hmm. then whatever, you're still probably going to win, but the Leyline is definitely good insurance. Very good hand there for Jacob. It's going to be quite happy to see that. 
He's got some early plays, some ways to protect his creatures with the slip out the back, as well as the Geist Light Snare back up. Yep, and some of the players that are on this mono blue deck is teammates Jim Davis and Mike Sigris. They all tested together, mm -hmm. and then Reed Duke as well, independently, uh, was on the deck. And some of these players are doing quite well, so a lot of mono blue in contention. If they did end up doing it, kind of breaking it, in air quotes here, mm -hmm. we could definitely see a lot of those really skilled players in contention for this tournament. Here we're going to see careful cultivation channeled, creating that 1-1 one, one mana dork. And there's Hornet Queen times two. These are not the cards you want to see in your hand. So Fire Prophecy's got some work to do here. Yeah, just the worst possible draws for Carl. Mm. That is the really awesome tech that we see from this list. And I yeah. believe uh, there are only two of those creatures in the deck. So those Fire Prophecies have to do some solid work at putting those to the bottom. But yeah. if Fire Prophecies get countered, all of oh. a sudden Transmogrify and Lucas. I didn't see exactly what was taken out, but most of the time when you bring in a creature, you take out your other creature because yeah. you want consistency on what you're going to hit from Transmogrify or Luka. So I would imagine there's no hits left in the deck as we speak. Oh, gosh. That's that not would good. Be, that would be worst case scenario. But at this point, yeah. I don't even think we're going to see anything hit because this one blue deck is just like, oh, you're trying to do something? No. You know, <laughs> the fun police. Oh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see a lot of stuff hit. It's just Carl's life total with all these mono blue spirits. <laughs> uh. Fire prophecy, aiming for the supreme phantom. It's just gonna slip out the back quick. Yep. Uh, you know, just go take a bit of a breather and uh, come back feeling rejuvenated and slightly, yeah. slightly bigger. And normally you think, okay, well this, why didn't Carl maybe wait on that? Mm -hmm. When you don't have a land to make, you gotta kind of make these tough plays where you can't really play, you, you can't really avoid anything. Yeah. And now we see from Jakob three answers Jeez. to that other fire prophecy. We Ugh. easily could just be done already <laughs> with just the horrible draws that Carl had. Just the worst possible of Hornet Queen into Hornet Queen. Does that he have was to so kill unlucky. his own thing? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> and that is What that's does it brutal. do, though? That is, yeah, you're just punching yourself for no yeah. reason. There's the good game from Carl. He oh. knows. There's nothing he can do, not finding the land, not finding any ways to break through the counter spell defenses here of Jacob yeah. Toth. So a clean victory there from Mono Blue. And honestly, I just gotta <laughs> go back one last time to just the unluckiness of Carl there.